Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Kabira. Walhamdulillahi Kathira. Wa subhanallahi burratan wa asila. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, nahmadahu wa nasta'inahu wa nastaghfir wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati na'amalina man yahadillahu falamudillala wa man yudlilhu falahadiyala wa nashadu an la ilaha illallah wa nashadu anna muhammadan abdahu wa rasulah يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه العزيز أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فإن مع الأسر يسرا إن مع الأسر يسرا ترك الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين. All praises of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. The one deserving of all praise. And we send our salutations and peace and blessings on our beloved Messenger Muhammad صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم. يا مسلمون أو مسلمز. Today we celebrate Eid al-Fitr. It marks the end of the fast of the month of Ramadan. We are in trying times and in trying conditions. Nevertheless, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided for us some sort of ease during this crisis. The beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informs us on this occasion that you should pay your sadqatul fit. If you have not done so, Try to do it as early as possible. And the beloved messenger, and the beloved messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, also informs us that those who fasted in the month of Ramadan, they should, and who follow it up with six days of fasting in the month of Shawwal, they will get the reward as though they have fasted for one year. May Allah subhanahu wa taala make it easy for all of us. My dear beloved brothers and sisters. I do hope that you are hearing me and that you are seeing me and that we come together on this day of Eid al-Fitr in different circumstances. Let us remind ourselves of the favors of Allah and perhaps we have taken those favors for granted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with so many favors that before the beginning of this crisis, we used to socialize ourselves. We used to come and go to the masjid without any limitations and restrictions. We used to walk on the streets and go to various places without any restrictions. We used to visit family and friends. Some of us may travel across and some may come to visit us. Some of us made intention for Hajj and that was unfulfilled. We see that all these favors of Allah, perhaps we took it for granted. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took away these favors from us. Let us understand, my dear brothers and sisters, that the greatest thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us is Iman. Faith, belief. Iman in the absolute oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without ascribing any partners or associating anything with him in our worship. Iman in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Iman in guidance in a time of misguidance. Iman in a time of certainty in a time of uncertainty. Iman in Iman when it is most needed. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Walillahi alhamd. My dear brothers and sisters, my message to you today is very simple. 
I will share three points with you and then end the khutbah with a hadith of the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Number one, let us all as Muslims realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us and he wants to forgive us. He wants us to turn back to him. And he has given us the month of Ramadan to make this step. We have indeed turned back to Allah in the month of Ramadan. The end of Ramadan does not mean turning away from Allah. The end of Ramadan does not mean going back to our bad ways and bad habits. The beloved messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam has informed us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the believer and is more merciful to the believer than his own mother. And the beloved messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam also informs us that when you take one step to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take ten steps to you. When you walk to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come running to you. Allah wants us to make the effort to turn back to Him so that He can forgive us and He, as He mentioned, He loves us. Let us therefore turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we have turned to Him in the month of Ramadan. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Walillahi alhamd. My second point, brothers and sisters, this is the second Ramadan we are experiencing the crisis. And for many of us, we thought last year that 2021 will bring about a, a, a better change. That did not happen. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His infinite mercies created situations for us. And not only did He do that, but also He provided ease for us. As He says in the Quran, the ayat which I have recited in the beginning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make mention, فَإِنَّمَا الْأُسْرِ يُسْرَى إِنَّمَا الْأُسْرِ يُسْرَى Then, with every difficulty, with every calamity, with every hardship, ease will come. And then he emphasized it in the second verse. Inna, verily, without doubt, ease will come with the difficulties. Let us understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in charge of everything. He has control of his creation. And he will give us difficulties. He will give us problems. He will give us hardships. But he also said that with these difficulties, I will provide ease. And we have seen that. And we know that. That during this period of crisis, as much as we think it is difficult for us, yet between these difficulties, ease came. Allah did not say to us that after the difficulty, then he will provide ease. No. With the difficulty, ease will be provided. And that is why we enjoy ourselves to some limit and to some extent. Because Allah SWT has provided ease for us. Brothers and sisters, let us bear in mind one thing. The one who put us through difficulties is the one who will open a way out for us. He wants us to turn back to him. And he wants us to appreciate the favors that he has given unto us. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Walillahi alhamd. My dear brothers and sisters, my dear fellow Muslims, we are witnessing today, not only here with us, but around the globe, many changes in natural disasters. Global warming, as they say. Global changes. You will recall just recently in Makkah, there was flooding in Makkah. You will recall also volcanic eruption. You will also recall floodings and of course the pandemic. All of these things are natural disasters. But what is more frightening and is more concern, we also see changes in human beings. When a human being 
can take the color of his skin and say to himself that this makes me superior to other human beings. When a human being can take the country of his origin and that make him superior to other human beings, when a human being can take his religion and that makes him superior to other human beings, is cause, for, is cause for some concern. What is happening in other places in the world, we do not want it to happen in our beloved country of Trinidad and Tobago. Racialism has raised its head once again. And the Quran lays it out very beautifully. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make mention in Surah Al-Hujarat, chapter 49 of the Quran. The translation of the ayat, O mankind, O mankind, verily I have created you of a male and a female, and have made you into nations and tribes and colors and languages, so that you may know each other, so that you may know each other, and that you will not hate or despise one another. This is the Quran. This is a message to all of mankind. And the beloved messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, every human being is a descendant of Adam, and Adam was created from dust. And the beloved messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam also said, that in the sight of Allah, every single human being is equal like the teeth on a comb. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the very said ayat, Inna akramakum inna Allahi atkakum. Verily, the best of you, the most honored of you in the sight of Allah is he who is best in conduct. He is who is most God-fearing. Let us realize our position as human beings. We are also seeing brothers and sisters hatred in anti-Islam, Islamophobia and bigotry. All of these things is a wake-up call for all of us as Muslims. We cannot ignore these challenges. And it is time, if we have not yet done so, it is time for all of us, man, woman, and child, to become Allah's representative in his deen, in his way of life which he has given us. And it is time for all of us to become role models of the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the only way we can represent Islam and present Islam to our friends, to our neighbors, to our fellow workers, to our employers, whoever they may be, it is time for us to lead the rule and set the examples of becoming Allah's vicegerent on earth and following the way of his beloved messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The second point is very clear. We cannot ignore these challenges and the time is now. And Ramadan has given us the start to become Allah's representative on earth and to follow the way of his beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Walillahi alham. My third point. And this, of course, to me is very, very important. Again, we are seeing changes around us. But let us understand one thing, my beloved brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us a special gift of the spiritual world, and that is Islam. Allah has given to us of the spiritual world the greatest thing, which is Islam. And he has given to us of this world this dunya, the blessings of the family, the, 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 the blessings of the family. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us of this world, of, this, of, of the spiritual world, he has given us Islam. And of this world, he has given us the family. 
let us protect Islam through the family. And let us protect the family through Islam. Again, let us protect Islam through the family. And let us protect the family through Islam. This is the legacy we have to pass down to our children and our grandchildren. My dear brothers and sisters, you can have everything of this world. And if you don't have Islam, you don't have anything. And you may have nothing of this world, but if you have Islam, you have everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran, Ma'indakum yanfad, Allah bakh. Whatever is with you is going to leave you. But whatever is with Allah, that will remain. And Islam is with Allah. And if we put Islam into our lives, that will remain with us until we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to pass down this legacy to our children and to our grandchildren. Protect Islam through your family and protect your family through Islam. This then brings us to another important point. We as parents have to ensure that Islam is embodied in our lives. If we have to pass down this legacy to our children, then we must be part of this legacy. And this is a very frightening situation because many parents, there's a big gap between parents and children when coming to Islam. A very big gap. And if we, as I said, have to pass down this legacy, then Islam must be part of us. The beloved messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, informed us, teach your children three things. Teach your children three things. Number one, love for Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Love for the Quran and love for Islam. If they are our children, then we are, our, then we are their parents. And who have to teach them? We. Teach your children three things. Saying from the beloved Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is how we have to pass down this legacy to them. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he passed down this legacy to his sons Ismail and Isaac. And they passed it down to their descendants. And Isaac alayhi salam, he passed it on to his son Yaqub alayhi salam. And Yaqub alayhi salam, before his death, he called his sons and he tell them and he asked them, O oh my sons, Allah has chosen you and Allah has given you a way of life. What are you going to worship after me? Have we ever asked our children that? When we leave this world, what will become of our children? Where would they go? What Islam did we leave for them? Yaqub alayhi salam is asking his sons, oh my sons, what would you worship after me? And they said, they said, O oh, our Father, we are going to worship your God, Allah. We are going to worship the God of your Father, Allah. We are going to worship the God of our forefathers, Ibrahim and Ismail. Who is that God? Allah. And we bow our will to him in Islam. They could have said that because their father passed down the legacy to them. Would our children say that after we? We have to ensure that they do that. And it is our duty and responsibilities as Muslims in these trying times. We are going through some difficult times, brothers and sisters. We are going through times in which we can see for our own selves. We are going to the sunnah of the beloved messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to close our masjid. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi informed that never close the house of Allah. We are seeing that when we come to pray, we should be standing side by side. That is not possible because we have to obey the law of the land, which is contrary to the rule of, of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it is hurting us. 
It is grieving us, but yet we have to obey. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Walillahi alhamd. Brothers and sisters, I want to share this with you this morning. We are a blessed family in Laramie. And when I say family, I mean members of the, we are all Muslims, brothers and sisters. We are in the Ummah of the beloved messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we are a blessed family in this community of Laramie. And I personally, I have no regret of being appointed your leader for almost two decades. We are indeed a shining example for those around us. And let me say this, brothers and sisters, if we are not aware of it, if we are not conscious of it, then listen. We are being noticed. People around us are noticing us as Muslims. And they expect good from us because they know the qualities that a Muslim should have. And that is why they come to us. They come to our doors, they come in the front of our masjid because they need help. And they come to us. They even come for, to me to make dua for them. They know our capabilities. They know our religion. They know our religious beliefs. And they expect good from us. That is why we are a shining example, not only to the people around us here in Laramie, but other Jamaats as well look at our Jamaat. And they speak highly of this Jamaat. And this is the legacy that we have received from our predecessors. And that is why we can say today, we of Laramie, the Muslim community of Laramie, are proud proud of its heritage, proud of its roots for what we have inherited from them. Those stalwarts in the past who have all gone to the great beyond, and you know each and every one of them, who have sacrificed their lives and their time to ensure what? To ensure that in La Rumin we have a masjid. And not just having a masjid, but a masjid that is active, this is what we have. This is what they have left for us. And we have to ensure that we leave and preserve this legacy for those who will come after us. Because this here is our strength. Here is our unity. Just think for one moment. Where would we have been today if there was not a masjid in Laramie? Where would we have been today? And when the house of Allah is placed in a community, in a village, in a locality, it is, the mul, it is the most beloved place of Allah. The most beloved place of Allah is the masjid. And when a masjid is placed in a locality, that locality is safe, brothers and sisters. This is the legacy that we have. And we have to preserve this for our children, that they will say when we leave this world, our predecessors leave this for us. Here is a place where you can build your iman, practice your faith, seek the knowledge, the house of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us and help us to preserve this sanctity for those who will come after us. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Walillahi alhamd. And now to the hadith of the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Be conscious of Allah wherever you are. If you do a bad deed, do not despair. Do not give up. But follow it up with a good deed. It will erase that sin. And treat people kindly. Treat people kindly. With honor with dignity, with respect, because these are the qualities embedded in us in the deen of Islam. Remember my three points. Allah loves us, and he wants us to turn to him 
and he wants us to and he wants to forgive us. Let us be role models in representing Allah and his beloved messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and protect Islam through your family and protect your family through Islam. Allahu akbar Allahu akbar. La ilaha illallah. Allahu akbar Allahu akbar. Walillahi alham. Barak Allah wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafana bi ayakum ila zikr al-Hakim innahu ta'ala jawadun karimun malikun barawur rahim.